Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller Recruiting in Yoga Pants. All right, for those that have been following the channel for a while, you might recognize this room. This was the original office for Amy Miller of Recruiting in Yoga Pants. <laughs> uh, as some of y'all know, been been uh, friends with me for a while here. Um, I actually moved into our guest room when we started doing work from home like COVID style, right? When we are all sent home forever. Uh, so I moved into the guest room, but now we have a guest. <laughs> my my oldest daughter, uh, my, my baby girl who's in law school, her school has gone completely online and it looks like it's gonna be that way for the rest of the school year. And so she decided to come home from the East Coast and finish out the school year here with us virtually. I'm so excited. Actually, she just really missed the dogs. I mean, who are we kidding? We know she just came home for the puppies, so I don't blame her. That's why I like staying home too. Let's get to snuggle with the pups. But so I have moved into my youngest daughter's cosplay studio. So you can see she's got some sewing machine and costume stuff. And anyway, she puts up with me, so it's nice of her. <laughs> we kind of trade off. We do shifts in this room. <laughs> You're not here to hear about my uh, household, you know, doings. Um, <laughs> we are here to talk about recruiting and busting myths and explaining what happens behind the scenes. So this week, it's kind of an interesting topic. I, I'm, I, I think this bothers people more than maybe we talk about, so it's probably a good one to tackle, right? But the idea this week is why are recruiters trusted to make judgment calls about the technical competency or expertise of people in industries that they know nothing about? Hmm, good question, right? And so you could apply this to any industry. You could say this about accountants, you could say this about manufacturing, you could say this about probably just about anything. So if I'm a professional recruiter and all I know how to do is recruit, which is accurate, <laughs> that is me. <laughs> How do I have any authority to make a judgment call on whether or not someone is a good engineer? It's a fair question. This came up in a, in a LinkedIn conversation, I guess it was last week, and you know, someone was very unhappy with me, and, and I get it. I, I no hard feelings, dude. I hear you loud and clear. I, 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 it's a fair call out, and I'm glad you brought it up because it did inspire this video, and I think it's something we should talk about. So maybe we'll even bust out the whiteboard. We'll see how it goes. So one of the the common concerns that a lot of job seekers will raise, and, and again, I'm just going to kind of use tech because that's what I know. That's my industry and what I'm somewhat knowledgeable about. How can I effectively judge whether or not someone is technically competent to do a role? Plot twist, I cannot. All right, so let's, let's not get it twisted. My job is not to vet the technical competency of a hardware engineer. That's what I'm recruiting these days. I did software engineers for a million years prior to this. Even then, it is not my job to vet whether or not someone is technically competent for a role. Let that sink in for a minute, because this is important. Now, a lot of you are like banging your head against the wall going, what the hell does she actually do then? <laughs> Also a fair question. <laughs> Here's the thing. My job, any recruiter's job, is to vet the potential fit, interest, and availability of a prospective candidate. Okay? That's it. My job in the early stages, there's a whole lot that comes after that. We've talked before about what is it a recruiter does. Anyway, that's another video you can check out if you like. My job is to vet potential fit, interest, and availability. You could add to that. You could say suitability, affordability. There's a lot of abilities that we could add in there. 
I am not going to test whether or not you can write code. I am not going to test whether or not you can machine a part for a piece of spacecraft. Okay, I, we could go on and on and on. I, I am not gonna vet whether or not you can lead a team of software engineers. So insert job function here, that is not my job. My job is to look for the indicators that you have experience doing that thing or that there are signs that you could do that thing here with us. Okay, and we vet that by looking at your previous accomplishments. This is why I give y'all so much shit about your resumes and about making sure that you're speaking to the basic qualifications of a role and that you are giving us data points that say, I can write successful code. I can ship features. I can create CAD designs. I can model uh, terabytes of data, uh, whatever it is, okay? It is not for me to say whether or not you are a good engineer. It is absolutely for me to say, based on previous history, data points on the resume, conversation I've had with this potential candidate, that I believe there are indications that this person can do it, all right? First step, y'all, first step, get invited to the interview. The interview process is where we are vetting your actual technical ability. Have you noticed that you don't actually interview with recruiters? Now you'll do an initial phone screen or you'll do an initial, or there may be an assessment. A lot of companies are doing like on an assessments, things like that. These are all different ways of vetting kind of the first layer of potential fit and, and ability. But the recruiter is not gonna walk you through a whiteboard exercise. If they are, I have questions, okay? I really do, I have that, not that work. But the idea is that the recruiter is simply verifying that there's enough of a fit that it makes sense to invest in a deeper dive investigation, if you will, of someone's potential role-related knowledge and fit based on certain technical competencies, okay? That is my job. So I will ask technical-ish questions. What I'm trying to do is pull out data points and pull out insights and information that give me an indication that you could be successful in whatever the technical aspects of this role is, okay? So there's a couple of things that I'm gonna do before I get on the phone with you and have that conversation. One is I'm gonna deep dive with my hiring manager and understand what is it are you looking for anyway? Okay, okay, you need a structural engineer that knows finite element analysis and hand calculations. Cool, I can recognize those words on a resume. I might even go crazy and do a little control F <laughs> and see if it shows up on your resume. Me, not the ATS. ATS doesn't do that, I do that. <laughs> but what I'm looking for is the content around those keywords that says you've actually done this thing. You've actually worked in an environment where you use this skill. You actually accomplished something doing that particular function. So I'm looking for that. So that's one thing I'm understanding from the manager. We're looking for these key skill sets. We're looking for the proof that someone can operate at this level doing this thing. Okay, that's number one. The second thing is I'm going to work with that manager to identify the right kinds of questions. Okay, what, what is it that you want me to vet for? What are the questions that I should be asking that are gonna scratch the surface of the technical expertise and competencies so that we know that it's a good use of our time to move forward with this person? So that manager is actually the one that's kind of giving me the insight and we're working together to create those screening questions, whether they're questions that I'm actually asking you on the phone or questions that are showing up in a, a, you know, a knockout question scenario and an ATS or things like that. So this is all done in partnership with the hiring team. All right. I, I've never, look, I can't speak for every recruiter in every company on the planet, but for me, I've never done this without the input of a hiring manager. And I don't know any other recruiters who have. 
okay? So we are leaning heavily on our hiring teams to give us the early indicators, what are the right answers, if you will, right? What are we looking for? What's kind of the proof in the pudding, if you will, that says this person is someone we should move forward with. And then we turn it over to them for a deeper dive technical discussion, all right? So to sum it up, try to keep this within our time frame. We're already over as usual. <laughs> 10 minutes, my ass. <sighs> anyway, the idea is I'm working with the manager from the get-go. I'm taking my guidance and direction from them on the role-related stuff. This could be hardcore tech if you're in engineering. This could be accounting. This could be whatever, whatever your competencies are, whatever your role is, but just understand we are not doing this on our own. We are doing this in partnership with our teams. And if we are getting it wrong, we're gonna hurt ourselves and look really stupid and maybe get fired. So it is in the recruiter's best interest to work closely with the hiring teams to make sure we're asking the right questions and that we understand the why behind the right answers. All right, I hope that helps. We could talk about this all day long. This video could have been three times as long and we'd still barely have scratched the surface, but rest assured, it takes a village. Recruiters are not doing this by themselves. Questions, comments, words of concern, you know where to find me, amy at recruitingandyogapants.com or drop a comment down below. I read all of them and I put the snarky ones on t-shirts. See you next week.